What's up guys, my name is Dale from Creator Pro website and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to speed up your WordPress website. And we're going to be doing this with just four easy tips that you can do in less than five minutes. So a website with a slow load time can hurt the user experience on your website, which could then hurt your Google traffic, which could then hurt your sales if you're making money with your website. And you might not even realize that your website is loading this slow. So let's go use a free tool to find out. Okay, so this is the website that I'm going to analyze and see how it's performing. Uh, and this is actually a website that I made for another tutorial called How to Create a Parallax Website. Uh, so I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, but I purposely made this one run really slow for the sake of this video. Uh, during the actual tutorial, it did not run slow. Okay, so in order to analyze it, what I'm going to do is just grab the URL and I'm going to go over here, which is tools.pingdom.com. Um, so Pingdom offers you this website speed test and it's for free. Uh, so I'm going to just paste that URL in here and then I'm going to test it from North America, uh, US, Washington, DC. You can test it from wherever you're at. Uh, so then just hit start test. And then that's just going to need a second to run. Okay, so now it's done. And if you scroll down, you can actually see the results. So the load time is around three and a half seconds, which is not great. Uh, it's not horrible, but it's not that great. And then the page size is 16 megabytes, which is just huge. Uh, you ideally on the top end want to be somewhere around one to three megabytes, but 16 is just obnoxious. So again, I made this one run slow by using very large images on the website. Um, which brings us to tip number one, which is to optimize your website images. So when the images on your website are too big, they'll load something like this, which is not good. It's way too slow. So in order to optimize these images, I basically just mean you have to resize and or compress the images. So let me show you how to do that. So the image that I'm actually going to be resizing and compressing is this uh, main image of this girl on the homepage. And I actually have the image uh, on my desktop and I'll actually open up the properties so you can see if I go to details, it is 7,000 pixels by 4,800 pixels, which is just huge. That's way too big of an image to be having on your website. So we are going to fix that. So if we just go over to here, which is photor.com, that's photor with an F, uh, and then you go over to edit a photo. Here is where you can actually edit photos. So. Uh, all you have to do is just go up to the top. There's this little open button. So I'll just click on that. And then I'm going to open one from my computer. And then I'm just going to grab the one of the girl and open it. And there are actually plugins that you can use that will automatically um, compress or resize images for your website. But there's a downside to having plugins, uh, or sorry, I should say too many plugins on your website. But I will get to that. Um, in a minute. So first, in order to actually resize images, uh, there's this little menu over here on the left and you can just see resize down here at the bottom. So I'm going to open that and then if the lock symbol is on, that means that you can just change the actual width value and the height will change correspondingly. Um, so if you, or if you uh, uncheck that, you can actually change both values separately. So I'm going to set this, I don't know why it's coming up as 4,000 pixels in here, because it was 7,000 on my desktop. Either way, both are really big. So I'm going to drop this to a 1,500 and then click apply. 1,500 is a pretty good size for images that are on your uh, full width homepage. So once that's applied, uh, you can just go up to the little save button. And then you can actually save it. So you actually have to log in. Uh, it's free. They don't send you any spam emails or anything like that. I usually just connect with Facebook in order to do it. So I'll just do that real quick. Cool. So that easy. It was one click. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is save a JPEG because JPEGs are a little bit smaller than PNGs. PNG files are a lot bigger. So as you can see, if I click on PNG, 
the file size here is 1.3 megabytes. But if I go to JPEG, that goes down to 185 kilobytes. And it's actually on normal quality. You can even do high quality if you really want, uh, but that's not gonna make a huge difference. The difference is in JPEG versus PNG. So just go ahead and click download. And then I'm going to go back to my website and actually put that on. So I'm gonna open this up and just replace it. I'll go to style. Uh, I'm using the Elementor page builder. It's an awesome drag and drop builder. And again, I show you that in this actual how to create a parallax tutorial, which is in the description. So now I'm gonna go to image and I'm gonna go to upload files and then select files. And then I'm just going to grab the new one, which I actually saved earlier as just girl 1500 to let me know that it's 1500 by 1000 pixels, uh, which you can actually see in the hover. So I'm going to open that up, let that load. By the way, another tip is deleting other media files in here, other pictures that you aren't using on your website. That will also help a little bit. Okay, so now that's uploaded, I'm going to click insert media. And now, as you can see, there's really no difference in the huge file versus this one uh, visually, but it loads so much faster. So I also have a couple images in here that are too big, uh, like this bus image behind the gallery, and then also the contact at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and replace those both really quick uh, with the originals. Okay, so I went ahead and replaced uh, both of those images, this one back here, and then the one at the bottom, which you can already see my website's already kind of moving a lot better. It was skipping earlier. Uh, so if you do that and your page time is still not quite where you want it to be, you can also compress your images using the online image compressor at imagecompressor.com. So what you do is just go to upload files and I'll just drag, uh, let's say that girl one in here, the girl 1500, the one that I've already resized. I'm gonna open that one and it will automatically compress it for me. So it's already compressed it to a negative 34%. So if you actually zoom in, you can see a slight difference. So what I'll do is drag this way down. So I'll compress the living crap out of it. So you can see it's a bit blurrier over here than it is over here. But if you can knock out, you know, say 20 to 30% of it with literally no visual difference, I can hardly tell a difference. Um, this will help a lot too. So you can just click on apply. And then as you can see up here, it compressed it by 43%. And then you can just click on download. And then you can also upload that one onto your site as well. So I'll just do that real quick. Choose image, upload files. And then I will grab the girl 1500 uh, dash min. So whenever image compressor saves an image, it'll put a dash min there. Uh, maybe for minimize. So open, and then I will insert media. And again, you really can't tell a huge difference, but it helps a lot, so update. So just to show you the difference already, I'm gonna go back to Pingdom Tools, and I'm going to run this test one more time. So start test. And you don't have to actually do both. You can do one or the other. You could resize and see how that works first, and if you really need to, then you can actually optimize using Image Compressor. Okay, so as you can see, that already brought this down to three megabytes, uh, which is huge difference from the 16 megabytes that it was at, and our load time went down a lot as well. So that's already helped a ton. Okay, so now tip number two to speed up your website is to manage your cache. So the cache on your website is basically just temporary storage for your images, the pages on your website, text or any other multimedia. So let me show you one very quick, easy thing that you can do to get that all under control. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna go over to plugins and then go over to add new. And then in search plugins, I'm just gonna type in WP fastest cache. And as you can see over here, it's this one uh, with the cheetah that says WP fastest cache. It's got 1 million active installations. So you know it is super legit. So I'm just going to click install now. And this is just a system that helps you manage your cache. And it does it automatically for you. So then just click activate. Cool. So now 
Over on the left, if we scroll down, you'll see WP Fastest Cash with the little cheetah. So just click on that. And here is where you're going to enable all of these settings. So I'm not going to go too far into what uh, all of this is, but you basically just want to check all of this stuff. It's going to give you all these little uh, notifications. Just click OK on all of them. You're not going to hurt anything on your website by doing this. Uh, it's just to manage all that. So cache, again, are temporary files. You're not going to be deleting any permanent ones. But this basically clears a bunch of stuff with your CSS files um, and all of the preview files that are loaded up while you're building your website. But again, it's not going to hurt to check all of these boxes. So I'm just going to click on Submit. And now I'm also going to go over to Delete Cache. And let's actually uh, delete this cache as well. So let's just empty it and make sure it's all um, nice and clean. Cool. So doing this will also uh, help save some space on your website, which will make it go a little bit faster. Okay, so tip number three is to delete plugins that you don't need. So having a ton of plugins on your website, yes, they can be helpful, but they will also take up a lot of space. So let me show you how to clear some of those. Okay, so I'm just going to go back over to plugins and then go to installed plugins. And we can just get rid of some of the ones that we don't need. So if you haven't touched it at all in a while, just get rid of it. Uh, so like Hello Dolly, that's just the uh, automatic one that's formed with WordPress. Um, you can also get rid of your anti-spam. As you can see, I'm not even, I don't even have mine set up yet. It says to get started, you have to set up your API key. So you can delete that, um, you can delete, you know, so Smush right here is the plugin that I mentioned earlier that will actually compress your images for you um, if you wanna try that out. But again, having too many plugins will actually slow down your website. So this plugin is kind of a double-edged sword. It works, but too many plugins is not great. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of that as well. Um, and then what you can do is actually go over to Bulk Actions and then just click on deactivate and then you can just click on apply and then the selected plugins were deactivated so now I can just select them again and then you can just go up to bulk actions and then delete them and then just click on apply and then it'll say are you sure we're gonna say yes cool so now that that's done I'm going to go back to Pingdom and I'm going to run my site again so I'm just gonna paste that in and then I'm on North, uh, North America, and then just click Start Test. Cool. So as you can see, we're down to a 2.8 megabytes with a two-second load time. This is a lot better than it was. Okay, so now for a bonus tip, which is, is it your hosting company? Because your web hosting company that you host your website with could actually play a role in why your website is running a little bit slow. And the most common plan that people are on with any hosting company is a shared plan, and that's sharing the same space with other users. Now, if you want to be doubly sure that your website is going to run a bit faster, you can actually switch up to a dedicated IP address. Okay, so if you're looking to switch hosting companies, I will put a link in the description to my favorite hosting company. It's the one that I host all of my websites with. I've got several dozen domain names with them. Uh, it's called HostGator, and yes, that is my affiliate link, but honestly, I do not promote anything that I haven't used for about a year or more, at the very least. All right, guys, that is it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want more awesome videos like this, then please feel free to subscribe to my channel. Rumor has it, for every new subscriber I get, a baby monkey is born in the rainforest. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.